today we will talk about this budget lighting hack that allows you to use one light and turn them into multiple sources, and also how I lit the scene utilizing acrylic mirrors. Let's get into it. Something that's often not talked about for lighting kits is mirrors, which is unfortunate because these things have become so handy. One cool thing about using mirrors and reflected light is that you can turn one light source into many different points of light. So that one light can be your background light, it can be your hair light, it could also even act as your key light. And this just opens up the door for more versatility and creativity. So what is the benefit of using a mirror, let's say over another light source? Well, there's basically two main reasons. And the first reason is that if you observe the world around you, you realize that a lot of the light you see is actually reflected in some way. One example of that is light reflecting off of a building and then that light then enters into a window and into your room. All of this to say is that reflected light is actually a very natural way to light your scene. And the second reason is its affordability. I was able to pick up four of these eight by eight inch sheets for about $12. So if you are on a budget, this is a great way to get another light source without having to actually buy a physical light. For this setup, I'm able to utilize one lighting fixture to create two lighting effects. The first being is this fake window light look, and the second being is this nice harsh kicker light that provides me a little bit of separation from the background. And the great thing is, I didn't have to set up another light just to achieve that look. Now what I like about these acrylic mirrors is that they're really lightweight and they're much safer than glass mirrors. Something that you do want to consider if you're using on the set with lots of people around. You can bend them, you can drop them, and they're not going to shatter into a million pieces. You also need some method in order to mount your acrylic mirrors to existing stands or friction arms. And the route that I went was to buy some of these thumb wheel lock nut adapters and epoxy them to the back of the mirror. And lastly, if you want different options, you can use masking or gaff tape to create different effects with your mirror, such as a window light or a Venetian blind like I have here. So once you have your quarter 20 on the back, you can utilize something like a friction arm to screw on the back. You can clamp this almost anywhere and position the angle just as you need it. So now I'll talk about how I lit the scene with just mirrors. Okay, so now we're looking at the lighting breakdown. So it seems a little complicated, but we'll go through each and every step. But our main light of choice, our light source, is the Aperture 60D. And over here, it's roughly set around 60%. I think it was actually lower for the actual setup. But on it, this is a Fresnel light, so you can actually adjust the focus by turning this knob. So out here, it gets narrower and broader. So this is our one light source. It's not hitting me, the subject, but just going past me into this array of mirrors. So let's first talk about this furthest back one. This is a Venetian blind look. So I just have some strips of gaff tape along there. That's the look I can achieve with the Venetian blinds. This mirror right up here is just my little window light. And that's just kind of breaking up the darkness in the background, adding a little bit of brightness back there. If I go right down here, I have a tiny four by four inch. This is actually just one of those sheets that I cut into four pieces. And all what this little guy does is redirecting the aperture 60D back into this other mirror. So this is actually my key light and it looks a little bit odd. Right now I have some little grease paper as a form of diffusion, just to break it up ever so softly. So if I take this off here, you'll see that it's just one of those mirrors that actually has the protective film still on. It gives it just a little bit different of a quality. It's not as harsh. And I kind of like experimenting seeing what this can do. You can use the same light as a backlight as a background light and as your key, all in the same setup. The first thing to note is that the size of the mirror makes a difference in the overall effect. A bigger mirror is going to allow you to create a larger reflection while a smaller one will give you a smaller projection. The closer the mirror is to the light source, the bigger the projection, but also the softer the image is. The further away, you're gonna get a smaller projection, but also you're gonna get crisper, harsher shadows. And as you can imagine, as you move the light further away, you're going to lose quite a bit of output from the reflected light. So I recommend having a bright, small, compact light source that also has a really narrow beam angle, and that will allow you to get really, really crisp shadows, but also to have enough output to light your scene. 
I recommend experimenting with acrylic mirrors, getting different sizes, getting different mounting solutions, and just having fun with this. This certainly is changing the way I light a scene, and I'm going to be utilizing them more and more within my shoots or within even my YouTube setups. So that's going to wrap up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.